Okay, let me undo my, my zipper. I kept the coat on just in case. We're getting warmer this morning. Good morning, everybody. Is your mic on? Maybe not. There we go. Now can you hear me? I need Joe and LJ to take care of me. <laughs> Oh, so glad to see everybody this morning. Really, really nice. Saw some snow on the way in, saw an accident on the way in, so please drive carefully today. Yes. There's some ice out there, and there's some silly people going too fast on it, so, oh, you? <laughs> so please, please be careful. So, uh, Lori, do you want to do a little music before the meditation, or we can go straight into meditation? We can do that. So if everyone would please close their eyes and just settle back into your chairs, whether you're here or you're home on Zoom, and just breathe in and hold it, and then you'll breathe out and hold it, just slowing down and taking a moment to separate ourselves from what's been going on in our worlds to feel more peaceful, to feel the silence, to be connected to source. Just allow yourself to breathe that connection in. We so need it. As it balances us, centers us, anchors us, helps us open our hearts and be loving. So allow yourself to just drift into the silence and enjoy this quiet.
slowly allow yourself to come back and be aware of my voice. For there is only God. And in this knowing, all is well in our lives. All is made new in our lives. For this is a new year, a new beginning, a new way of being, a new way of living and loving. This is a year of opening our heart and embracing those around us. And as we know this and accept it into our lives, I accept that all is well for all of us, that life is good, we love and we are loved. And say with me, please, and so it is. Just open your eyes and come back in. Oh, good morning, good morning. So uh, we want to start. I want to <clears throat> mention the altar. LJ has changed it again for us, and it's it's really lovely. LJ, so peaceful. I was sitting there looking at it this morning, and I just wanted to go off into the ozone and just kind of stay there for a while. Okay. So are there any newcomers today? I can't see clearly out there. So, oh please, if you if you'd stand up and introduce yourselves, please. Hi, Gary. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. Oh, lovely. Did you get snow over there? Yes. Oh, wow. Cool. Hopefully that it was still convenient for you to get out and drive and everything. It took a couple days. Ah, it's a lot of snow, huh? Yeah. Are you on the old switchback? Oh, yes. You are up there. Hi. Cool. Well, thank you for coming. Oh, now this year, we're looking at core values in more depth. So core values serve as a measuring stick for all of our choices and decisions in life, keeping us focused on the person we want to be while creating our best environment for happiness, inner peace, and clear thinking. So this month is the month of the three R's. So we're looking at respect, resolve, and resilience. So it'll be fun to see what our speakers have for us today. So, Miss Lori, would you like to open it all up with a really neat song? I don't have anything with a bar, though. Oh, well, I have the last song. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. And, and especially to our newcomers from Toll House. I've never known any from, like, from Toll House before. So this is quite an exciting day for me. So I'm going to sing really good and loud. <laughs> but it's really hard because my hands are very cold. So I have to do this for a few Are you setting this up because it's not going to be good? Oh, 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 this is going to be great. Oh. This is a song that I wrote called The Church Without Walls. Woo. Now my guitar keeps going out of tune because it's real cranky because it's cold too.
Church without walls has no leader or rules, and except one and all with compassion and truth, no God but Jesus trapping in the wisdom of heart. For competition or judgment to divide us apart. A church without walls is nature outside. In the quiet we live. Okay, now we're going to move into our spiritual thought today, and we have John Lalan who's going to come give us some words of wisdom. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> nice song, Lori. Oh, thank you. Very nice. And good morning. Good morning, good morning everybody. John. Well, um, I want to just talk about a uh, something that happened uh, well last year, and then a little follow up a few few weeks ago, actually. That um, in March of 2022, um, Joyce and I lost uh, a good friend. She she passed on. Her name was Ellen. Um, she had two girls, 36 and who are now 36 and 31. And Joyce has known Ellen for. Um, uh, over 45 years, and I've known her probably over 35 years, and we were made the, the godparents to her daughters, and uh, who are 36 and 31 now, and um, when she, prior to passing away, she asked me if I would be the executor of her estate or the successor trustee, and I agreed to do that. So this is just kind of laying some groundwork for, for a, a few things. That the biggest task in this whole thing was to sell her house. There were other issues with pensions and things like that, but the house needed a lot of preparation to even get it to the point we could felt good about having a real estate agent come over. And then when we did that, there were additional things to be done. But we worked through the whole process um, and uh, got, it, got it sold. It was it was really uh, quite quite wonderful. It did go pretty smoothly all in all. But two door, two days before the close of escrow, the hot tub broke. It was discovered two days. Everybody wanted let's close on the day that we had set. We made a side agreement that the beneficiaries these these two girls, two young women, um, and I would uh, or they would. Uh, from the proceeds, pay for a new hot tub, or repair the hot tub, or or buy a new one. And so we would look into that. It had good wiring all the way out to it. Um, so we thought we're going to be all right with this. So it didn't. It could not be repaired. We had to uh, get a new one. And so we did that. The um, buyer said she would take care of all the electric. Well, when um, when it when push came to shove. The hot tub was way more expensive than we had thought, and the electricity was not good at all. Even though it powered the last one, it was not going to be good for the next one. Uh, there needed to be everything from the breaker box out to a trench, all kinds of things. Going to be very, very expensive. The beneficiaries um, dug in and said, "We have paid enough. We're not paying uh, anymore." The buyer said, "We're not." We're not going to pay for this. There was a hot tub working when we bought it. And so we had this dispute. It kind of escalated during the week. And on Friday, it got to the point where 
you know, there were just little innuendos and we were dealing with not just buyer seller, but we each had agents. We had had a couple of electricians out there and other people that were going to be involved in putting this in. So it became kind of an expensive deal with both sides kind of dug in that we ain't doing no more. Um, so this, when we got to that point on a Friday, I talked with the two girls and we set up to have a conversation on Saturday morning that uh, we would talk about how can we possibly settle this thing, you know, get this done so nobody has to deal with it anymore. And, and it works. Um, and so we went to, went to sleep. Uh, I woke up about three in the morning. I was totally stressed. It was still running through my mind. We were really at an impasse. I had no big ideas. And so I thought, I'm going to pray on this. So I, I did. I, I launched in and, you know, I'm taking the class with Reverend LJ and we're using a book that outlines the steps and we've all read books that have the steps. So I'm going to outline the steps also that um, the first was I just knew that uh, God was behind all things. The divine spirit was everywhere all the time, including this dispute. And next I knew that God was in me and I recognized that God was also in all the disputants, if you will, that all the people who are party to this, and there were, you know, like I said, five or six people in this. And as I thought that um, divine spirit in all of them, I, this vision kind of popped into my head of all their shiny eyes. I kind of saw them. I went a little deeper with that, really knowing that divine spirit was with us all in this. So I moved on to the third step, just affirming and knowing that with spirit, with all of us and in this dispute, there's a resolution to be had here. We can work out something that is going to be fair and beneficial to everybody. I then expressed uh, my gratitude that divine spirit was behind all this, that there was a solution out there that we were going to make this make this happen. And then I released it, knowing that it was already so. So that was the completion. I went back to sleep. When I woke up, I immediately had a fair and beneficial to all solution in mind. Somewhere in that period of sleep, something arrived. So uh, I'd set up to, to speak to the, to the two young women, and we had that conversation. I laid out my thinking about what we should do, what we should offer, why it would be fair, why it should be accepted. And they said, okay, okay, send the, send the email, outline what we just talked about. I did that, I sent it to the agent, she sent it to the other people. Um, and I heard back within about 15 minutes that that sounds like a good solution, we're all on board with it. So we went forward with that and, um, and it worked. So I, I just felt the power of prayer in that whole, whole process. Um, but I wanted to, to go on and kind of address some of these themes also. The first being respect, that when the vision of their shiny eyeballs popped into my kind of meditative prayer here, um, I, I went deeper with it. And there is no greater respect available, I think, than just seeing the divinity in all people, especially who are you know, part, of a, part of a problem, seeing that divinity. Um, the next thing I, uh, I, I, I thought was when I woke up that morning, I knew this was a, I, I, I saw the plan and I knew it was a good plan and I was resolved in that plan. I was real settled in. I knew it was gonna, gonna work. Um, I knew that my prayer was, was effective. And so there, there was a resolution or a, a resolve in my mind that we're gonna make this, make this work. Um, and then just to cover all the, all the themes, this resilience that we had already sold the house. We had dealt with the pension, the IRA. We had dealt with all this stuff. Um, I was ready to be done with the whole thing. Um, and I, everybody, everybody was ready to be, be done with this. So we all had resilience to just get through this one more dispute and, uh, and get, make it be fair and beneficial to everybody. So um, with, with that, I wanted to say a few remarks about the last step, because this is kind of a spiritual thought addendum, if you will, or spiritual thought et. But uh, the fifth step in this process is releasing, um, releasing the prayer, knowing that it is so. 
And Ernest Holmes says that that releasing is knowing that the object of our desire is an accomplished fact. Um, and it, it's also thought that by releasing it, we're, we're, we're expressing no doubt in our prayer, that there is no doubt. If we can let it go, we don't have any doubt in it. So my, when I heard Reverend Bob say from this very stage <laughs> a few weeks ago, um, instead of releasing, I'm going to read his quote, instead of releasing it, keep it in our mind every morning when we wake up, experience our vision of our prayer and see it as reality. I thought that's blasphemy. And uh, <laughs> instead of releasing it, no, no, no. Um, that's contrary to Ernest Holmes. How can we do it? And so um, I, I read more about it. We talked about it in our class. I talked more about it with Bob. And I've really come to the conclusion that I got excited for nothing. It was really um, more of a distinction in language than a difference in, in approach. So what um, Ernest Holmes says that pray your prayer each day until it manifests. And so this, but by Bob saying, when you wake up, know that it's, know that it's still, uh, still there. It's, uh, Reverend LJ used the word tone, uh, that it is a, um, there's a tone from that prayer, an expectancy that it's all going to work. And that that's really a, a repetition of the prayer, if nothing else, in kind of an, an abbreviated way. So I explained to Bob that I no longer thought he was being blasphemous <laughs> and it all worked out. All right. That's so it is. Thank you. Oh, that's funny. Thank you, John. Now, Miss Lori, I'm going to give you an option. We can either do music now or we can do music after the talk. What would you prefer? Oh, you don't get a preference. The audience says now. I'm not really used to this weird little stool thing. Is this yours, Joe? No, it's not mine. Patty. Oh, Patty's back. Well, now it's time for my token Lucinda Williams song. <laughs> it starts with a C. <laughs> Lucinda and I are the same age, and we both have the same initials, LW, even though you only know me by Ballard. My real last name is Witches, which is Lori Ballard. I mean, Laura Witches, so I'm actually a Laura, too. I don't know if anyone knew that, but I just thought I'd throw that little trivial fact in there. And by the way, I really want to know what the resolution was to that problem. That's real, so we need to know those things. <laughs> No, it just made my stomach run just oh, to talk to that one. Real estate. Why well, I don't do it anymore. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Oh 
voice just keeps getting better and better and better. So now, da -da 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 -da, our very own Reverend Joe Bull is going to talk to us. Well, good morning. Let me fix this before Missy says something. I'm glad you did because I forgot. <laughs> she won't let us forget. Wow, an executor. Lawan and I have been through that together as well. We had to do it by default, basically. Uh, that's it's a lot of work. It's incredible. And you are the perfect example of resilience, my friend. You stayed with it. You believe in yourself and you believe in your prayer. It doesn't get better than that, folks. It just doesn't. And that's what I want to talk to you about today is resilience. Uh, so John's John's talk goes right along with that. Um, and I, I believe that spirituality and resilience go hand in hand. So this definition I found for spiritual resilience is, this is what I found. Spiritual resilience is the ability to sustain one's sense of self-purpose through a set of, re, of beliefs, principles, and values while encountering adversity, stress, and trauma. I know none of you guys have gone through that. I have, uh, but we are also we also do this by using internal and external spiritual resources. Now, what the heck does all that mean? And how do we get this resilience? Do we have to buy it? Do we have to pray for it? How do we how do we receive this resilience? You've heard that saying before. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. I know you've all heard that. And I don't think I've ever liked that term, but it really, what, what doesn't kill us, actually, we do get stronger. We really do. Uh, we seem to be able to adapt even stronger after a devastating circumstance. How do we do that? I've spoken to many people during my life on this planet who have gone through major, tough, challenging circumstances and yet made it through and are stronger than ever. Have you known people like that? I'm sure you have. Maybe you yourself have survived a tragic event and made it back to the point that you're all right again today. I know I have experienced those obstacles in life and survived and thrived again and again. Spiritual connection is as important in our lives as anything else that I can think of. It serves as a key factor of resilience. 
And if you ask, people will tell you what spirituality, that spirituality is an important resource for managing hardship. We've all gone through that. Studies by spiritual practitioners have found that people like you and me discovered that grounded spiritual practices help in five key domains of life. Reliance on relationships. Relationships are so, so important, aren't they? We don't have to go through anything alone unless we choose to. But relationships together, we can talk things out, we can pray together, we can help each other, always. Spiritual transformations, meaning using spirituality in all circumstances, not just some, but all circumstances in life. Coping with everyday life situations. Coping with, for a lack of a better word. And the power of belief. Our belief system has got to be strong, doesn't it? It really does. And if we start to lose that belief system, we need to get that back. And we know how to do that. And commitment to spiritual values and practices. Now, I know I've spoke with you before about spiritual practices. We all have those practices in our lives, however we do it. John's a perfect example of that. He went into prayer. He knew what to do. He knew where to go for his source. He went within, with his highest source. Uh, I've mentioned this many times before about spiritual practices and the amazing uplifting effects it has on our daily lives. When we pray, when we meditate. I've told you before, if you meditate for three minutes or 30 minutes, it doesn't matter. It's that you got still and you got connected with the one the highest source to release and let go of what's bothering you and allow highest source to come and give you a resolution to a situation. It works each and every time. I, I promise you. And prayer. Prayer every day is a great way to start your day and to end your day. Challenges that we may face over time is beyond merely coping with them or making it through the adversity. It's about being transformed by it. It's about learning and growing and being positively transformed by adversity. These tough things we go through actually help us to grow as we use this powerful thing we all possess in God's spirit, this spiritual resilience that's within us. We were born with it. It's in all of us. That's where your resilience is. You don't have to go out and buy it or try to figure out how to use it. It's already embedded within us. God anointed us with that. He even did so for children, for small children. And spirituality and resilience are definitely correlated. I have no doubt about that. Reliance on spirituality helps provide us with consolation and comfort throughout our lives. That word comfort alone brings me joy. Reliance on spirituality helps provide us with consolation and comfort. As an aspect of resilience, spirituality provides a framework that guides us through the challenges of life each and every day. This I truly believe. Children go through adversity all the time too. Remember as children, we went through tough times. I think we all remember when we were very dis disturbed about something, we got picked on or something happened that just really, really shattered us for that moment. How do we manage to get through that as children? Well, without really knowing it or what it was, as kids, we also had resilience within us. We also knew who to go to to make us feel better, to help us cope with a situation that saddened us or frightened us. That person that we knew who to go to. My Papa Pat. I always knew to go to Papa. 
He would love me and hold me and help me realize that this too shall pass or heal. That person is God, spirit, in human form for a child. That comforting pat, that arm around me to pat my head or pat my back and say, it's okay. You're going to be all right. And as kids, we don't hold on to these things very long, do we? We go right back into whatever is new and next to do. As adults, for some reason, we hold on to our, our, our past problems and things that, that bothered us. As I said earlier, spiritual resilience is the ability to sustain a sense of self and purpose through a set of beliefs, principles, and values when encountering adversity. By using internal and external spiritual resources. And to me, internal resources means going within with God. As God resides right within us, God's spirit is right there within us. The external resources being my connection with God sources outside of me, meaning for other people with other people, human beings, we're all spiritual and we support and help each other all the time. That's how we get through things. We're social beings. We're meant to talk to each other, to be together in support. Uh, by the way, my, my church community is another great external source for me. I hope it is for you. There's no place I'd rather be on a Sunday than right here, right here in my church with my family. Am I seeing all things as good? Always, always. My life partner, Luana, is a huge resource for me. I'm blessed to have her to help remind me of my good, remind me that I'm okay. And all that I take on, and, and she encourages me to do everything that I want to do. It's important to have a partner like that you can go to. We all have that resource here on this planet in the form of human beings. And maybe in the form of a valued family member or a close friend, or maybe our four-legged little animals, our pets. Those bring me great joy, great joy. And just holding them, sometimes you can just be sitting still and a cat or a dog will come up to you and just lay down next to you. They just seem to sense that you need some love or comfort. So resilience comes in all shapes and sizes and forms. Reminds us of our resilience. And our purpose in life, we all have a meaning and purpose to life. We all have something to contribute. In life, we do this daily without really knowing it sometimes. By something we said to someone, a moment in time when we assist somebody, a hug or a kind word or a kind gesture towards someone else. These little things that we do give us purpose and meaning. A musician gives us joy by giving of their talents to us. So thank you for that today. Thank you very much, Lori. Remember, we are unique, each of us. So what we bring to others is unique as well. We are all wired differently. We all think differently. No one has a brain like yours or mine. That's how we contribute to others, by sharing our thoughts. And we grow together. We all have values to bring to this world through each other, and that also gives us our purpose on this planet, in this life. When we feel down or had a recent setback remember that's all it is it's just a recent short setback and that's all it is and that's when we need to look at that and say you know what i'm through with that i'm going to release and let go of it i'm not going to hold on to that i can't move forward today if i'm still thinking about something bad that happened to me last week 
it's just a short period of time that we had this setback. Let it go. We spring back, rebound, return to the real us, and we always find, always find a way to press forward, find a new way to move on. A resilient person is not easily defeated. We find ways to get past that obstacle and adversary. In our spiritual practices, we develop our mental disciplines, our habits, and bounce back from all things. We know how and where to find our strength, our positive power in time of need. We are resilient because God's spirit designed us this way. Resilience is developed by being focused on what we can change, as I said, and letting go of the things that we can't. Let them go. Remember, resilience is a gift from God's spirit. We know that our highest source already has resilience, which means that we already have it too. Please don't forget that. The elements of spirituality is composed of three aspects that the shaman the shamans, the healers, the sages, and wisdom keepers of all time from all the continents say that human spirituality is composed of relationships, values, and life purpose. Coupled that with resilience that lives and functions within us, we are equipped with all we need to handle anything that life brings our way. Anything. And remember, as a church, you have people you can call for prayer to remind you of your good. You have your practitioners and your ministers, and they're always willing to talk with you and remind you of what a fabulous human being you are. God is, we are, I am, and so it is. He's tall compared to me. <laughs> oh, the two of you today, both speakers, thank you very much. Lots to think about. You both were right on with all the things you were saying. You know, I was thinking before earlier, we were talking with Joe, and he was talking about his job and all the things he did as a sheriff and the things that he had to keep, you know, dealing with. And as he was speaking, I'm thinking in his job, he was all of these things that he's talking about. He had to have resolve to keep going back out there. He had to have resilience, you know, respect for people. And got me thinking about how these really are things that we do every day and how important they are to really, really know what we are. Thank you, guys. Uh, let's see. Let's do our offertory. So, um, LJ, would you... And Lori B, would you two come up? Because I know you guys will just dance down sure. and give it some movement. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> okay. That's you want. That's it. That's it. Are we going to do the thing first? Uh, we're going to do the thing okay. first, but we're going to grade you in just a minute too. Divine love. Divine love. Flowing through me. Flowing through me. Blessings, Blessings and increases. increases. All that all I that give and all, all that I receive. receive. Thank you too. Now just dance your way. Move it. Let's see the movement. Oh, look at them trying not to move. <laughs> oh, and Reverend Missy's going to put up on the Zoom how to do it uh, for the Zoom people. And I saw her fingers up, so it's already up there. Thank you, honey. So while they're uh, doing that, uh, we're, let's go ahead and start something. Hold oh, no, on, we gotta watch him come back. <laughs> I won't move on until you two are through. Thank you both. <laughs> Ooh, thank you. We'll take that one through. <laughs> I don't know what she drank, but it's sure wired. <laughs> oh, I like it. So we'll move into announcements. So I know uh, Reverend Brenda has uh, a couple she's going to come up and give us. Go faster, faster. <laughs> 
everybody's bouncing this morning. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I am happy to announce that um, World Sound Healing Day is on February 14th. It's been shared around the world for, hi everybody on Zoom. <laughs> it's been shared around the world for 21 years. Well, this is the 21st year. And we are bringing that to the Positive Living Center this February 14th. And um, it's from six to seven. There's flyers on the back. We're looking for musicians that wanna play upbeat, you know, nice sounding music. Um, so if you haven't been approached, Please get a hold of me. My number is also on the flyer. Um, it's going to be an exciting day. Um, World Sound Healing Day. So nice to be healed and by fun, sound fun and vibration. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be wonderful. So hoping to see you here on February 14th at 6 o'clock. So 6 to 7. It's not that long. So it'll be a lot of fun. We hope to see you here. And you're going to announce Drum Circle too? Oh, Drum Circle, if you haven't forgot. Or, or if, anyway. I don't know how to say that. That sounded wrong for some reason. Anyway, it is the second Saturday um, of every month at four. And I know John Alon has his at 2.30? Two. Two. So anyway, might as well mention that while I'm up here. So you all have a great day. Sorry, one more thing. It's also on Zoom. So um, if you're watching from Zoom and you want to join us on February 14th, <laughs> you get to see us here again. And we get to see you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, we're cutting everybody off from any caffeine Sunday mornings. Can you tell? <laughs> okay, so Joe is our prayer partner. So grab him and get prayed up. And yes, Barney. I did have a little note. Oh, please. Uh huh. Come on up. <clears throat> I was just moving right First along. One, the person who does the accounting, I did finally cash that check for the music. <laughs> Which is kind of funny because I don't think I've ever cashed a check for the music. Oh. I just, and maybe I just didn't feel like it was worth it or something, but I just, I don't know, I never did. But I cashed it this time and I put a bunch of it in. It was you? Thank you. <clears throat> um, as you all know, I work on a lot of environmental issues from energy and fire and everything like that. And I'm also working on my son um, to instill some of the values of that we learn here at the Positive Living Center about you can do things. So um, he's been really str a little stressed because he got married and then he realized, I go, what's going on? He goes, well, I, I'm in this, I just, he's been selling solar for a year. And he said, on April 13th, they're gonna change the whole game with solar and PG&E. And it's gonna make it very unaffordable to get solar on your houses. They're gonna, they're gonna cut the rates they pay, rate payers, by 80%. So you're going to get 80% less when you sell your energy back to PG&E. So I'm making public announcements everywhere, and I'm making them here, that before April 13th, if you've been thinking about solar um, uh, in any way, shape, or form, it's been problems. Um, I've been in the community now for literally five days, just extolling the virtues and learning all about putting solar on roofs, even though I do all kinds of other stuff. So I, if you've been thinking about it, reach out to someone you've been talking to. You can reach out to my son, Charlie, if you like. Um, but just take a look at it because it's all going to change. And and that's it. I just think that we ought to become more energy independent, more food independent, and our community needs to become more resilient. And these are the ways that we do that. So um, thank you for your respect. And I'm sorry, I was shilling up here a little bit for my son, but I do have cards. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. So next week's speaker is Reverend Judy DeRosa. So please come and listen to her. And then also um, Kim Haley is supposed to our spiritual thoughts. So. I'll call her and verify that she's really back and it'd be exciting to see her again. Yes. So please come and enjoy. And I said, Joe, before we started, so now we're gonna do the prayer of protection. So please join me. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. The energy of God is me. Wherever I am, 
God is and all is well. Reverend Lori, do you want to come up and bounce us out again? Why, sure. We're rocking with you this morning. So this, this next song is um, it is an old one, so you might want to sing along with it. I don't know, just maybe. today, doesn't it? <laughs>
Oh, what a great day. It's been so enjoyable, guys. Really upbeat. So just close your eyes with me and let's just do a prayer to send us on our way. As we go forth today, knowing there is only God, we take this high energy with us. We take this love with us. We take our open hearts with us. We take our eyes radiating all of this out into the world, for the world needs us and the world is blessed by us. And we are blessed by this beautiful place where we live and all that happens in our lives. Looking forward to the future and all the opportunities in 2023. And I know that we are blessed and I am so grateful for our blessings and say with me, please. And so it is. Oh, thank you, everybody. Go and enjoy LJ's class is next if you're staying for LJ's class. So feel free. And should I leave everything on for you? You have your own computer. My own computer. Your own computer. <laughs> that works for me. Do you want the podium?